Hello, this is Kenya Podcast Preach. Welcome back to my podcast, Deep Water. This podcast is brought to you by Applied Strengths Ministry, where we believe working together in our strengths is the effect of working out the will and calling of God in and through our lives. The title of this message is Kingdom versus Priesthood. Okay, so first things first. This morning, February 9th, 2024, I did an interview with a person from Wade.co, which is an audio to video conversion company. I wasn't interviewing, but providing feedback as to my thoughts on using their platform. Now, how nice of a world would it be if every company actually wanted to know if they were, one, providing a product that the public wanted and doing it well, two, seeking input from the end user on its effectiveness and user ability, and three, asking if they could make it better for you and future users. Five stars suggest and the company to involve their customer in product improvement and user ability both of which included very little input because they do what they do so well. And yes, I made user ability one word. (laughs) But what I'm trying to say is that by them reaching out, it took them to the next level. Most companies do not do this because they do not care. No, it's not that they do not have time or resources, but that they don't want to hear what you think. And this may be that they might think that the feedback you want to give would be negative or maybe even counterproductive in terms of what they are trying to sell. Hey company peeps, any feedback is useful if it can help you to get to the point where you are operating in excellence. And I think that your audience, the end user, is way more informed about your product than even you are at times. You know that this is true if you have never sought out input from the people who pay you to make a living. Yes, I'm being hard but helpful. If you want to succeed, then tap into your untapped into resources. And oftentimes it's a free resource to measure your effectiveness. And no, Don't just trust an auto data AI to inform you of your effectiveness. Listen, drug dealers, if you were to measure your effectiveness by money piles alone, would exceed any and all of your marketing strategies that you pay top dollar for, if you in fact use money piles alone to determine success. They spend no money on marketing and smoke you and how much money is left on the table. And that, right there, my friends, is a key. It is not how much money you make, but how much you leave on the table. It is, in fact, how much you could have made, but didn't, that makes a difference. I've heard such stupid things stated, such as a boss who couldn't get along with his own employees, even though they were a top employee. So, but because he or she couldn't figure out who was who in the employee-employer relationship, they would let them go and replace them with three or four other employees. Yes, because it took three to do the work of the one employee but it didn't matter to the company as long as they felt that they had won. That's a lot of money on the table. But they didn't, did they? Nope, they didn't win. They left money on the table and no matter how much they make, they didn't make all that they could have. We call this, that is my management team, calls this someone who is either on the wrong bus or seat or both. It is a difference between champions working together or your company becoming nothing more than a marketplace hurdle something that is to be overcome, or to get me to my next level, which most of the time won't include staying with your company. I asked a business owner to meet with me once upon a time so that I could inform him that most all of my employees were complaining about the customer service that they were receiving. He looked at me and stated to the effect, well, thanks for letting me know, and after some lesser chatter, as I know a non-listener, when I hear or see them, he left. He did state that they weren't doing so bad on their financials before leaving. They ended up not fixing the problem, and it is now under new ownership. What was his problem? It was that he had a mindset whereby he measured his success by how much they made in profit after all the bills were paid. There was no slot in his mind that considered how much money that they were leaving on the table. Look, 20 people no longer buying from your shop daily is leaving money on the table. And this is not to say of them sharing about their dissatisfaction on every social media platform that exists. You may have made money that day, but how much? And here is the big secret. How much money didn't you make that you could have just by making small adjustments? Solve that problem. A responsibility of anyone who calls himself a manager, leader, or entrepreneur has, and you stay in business as an influencer. Handle your people correctly Hire for talent, right bus, right seat. 
no matter what industry you are in, and you'll never have to worry about the books. One example before I get to the purpose of this message. Do not be impressed that you have 50 people in line every day at your shop of business. Be impressed that when the line forms, you do everything to reduce it as quickly as possible. Customers like to see urgency in peace, of course, and not panic, but urgency focused on the customer in order to make something that is wrong right. Look, we all expect great customer service. It's a human default. But if you can figure out how to magnify customer experience, yes, providing a high-level experience to your customers, well, then perhaps you can pay the bills, earn a living, and, well, change a small piece of this world, leaving no money on the table. And no, I do not condone drug dealing from drug dealers who work the streets or from those who work the public through the thousands of TV ads shown every day to a watching audience. No, I won't go further into that in this message because I already told you. I have to get back to the original point of this message before you hang up on me. All of this from an interview, Ken? Nope. Before that, I was listening to a YouTube video about how a guy, well, two of them, shifted from working full-time in the ministry into a career job and sharing with their audience how their journey was going. And so that, along with the interview, is what sparked up the conversational thoughts in this message. So then what is this message really about? It is about those who make the transition from paid, full-time ministry, and then they leave that gig and move into a secular or Christian-based marketplace business. And in truth, I maybe should just say that it is more about those of us working in both worlds, and all who are authentically born again are doing just that. I work in government, and I have a Bible-based podcast, and yes, I touch a whole bunch of other things that may involve Christianity or those who are not. Listen, King David, government worker. Solomon, government worker. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, all government workers. I could go on. All the generals in the Old Testament, government workers. I'm not saying that government is the best job. I'm just saying there was a lot of government workers in the Bible. If I work and get paid in ministry, then most of my time will be expended to equip the saints for the work of ministry and making disciples. Not all, and it does depend on what position I am in. For example, an evangelist will equip others to do what he or she is doing, and will even have a disciple or some, but they will be anointed to work with the lost, anointed to preach the gospel at that level. I call it the commercial fisherman level. Anyways, most who work in the ministry will be working with others, equipping them for the work of ministry and making disciples. Okay, so but now then, what about those who have a job? (laughs) So many excuses have been made regarding this question, right? I have a job and I do not have time to invest in the kingdom things. Oh, the surprise that may come upon them that prescribe to that sort of bent thinking. If, and now is the time to really pay attention, you have a job, all who know you, even some who only know of you, should know that you are different, different than other humans who do not know God. Now, I didn't say that you should go about preaching the gospel to all of those in whom you work with. After all, you are getting paid to do something. But rather, those who work with you ought to see by your behavior, by what words come out of your mouth, by how you treat those in positions above you. Yes, you preach by your actions and deeds. Then they will see and understand that you are different. And but if you do it well enough, then they will also be drawn to you when they hit the wall and need some of whatever is on your life in their life. And now, but also there is this other thing that when you work in a job and do ministry, yes, work and do ministry, and I'm not talking about being a good father or mother, just behaving as you ought in secular events, living the good Christian life, which thus far in our times in this America has encountered very little in the way of resistance. No, I'm talking about being in some sort of ministry or helping a ministry while also having a job. Is this not the majority of us who call ourselves Christians? Yep, Kim, it is. Radio. <laughs> but so then why are so few doing it? And but even when someone who is wired for their role in ministry Leave it so that they can buy bread every day. Why do they fall under persecution by those who, for example, may be in full-time ministry? Even the sheep complain when that happens. Listen, if somebody leaves the church and goes to make a living, but then they take that living that they're making and they invest it into other people's lives the way that God would do it, hence they are manifesting the kingdom of God on earth through their career or vocation, why would you criticize them? Shouldn't you also be doing the same thing? (laughs) Well, and personally, I don't think there's any room in the church to complain about people when they do that, because the church isn't doing their job. But I've already shared about that. 
Well, hmm, what of it, Ken? Well, this is my take on it, and it is way bigger than this message, and what little is contained in this message is not the entire answer. Well, and now that I have given some thought as to how to answer such a big question, I have decided to touch on the smaller of the matter. We have been trained by the world how we should act as Christians. They would prefer that we all look like light switches. When the time is appropriate and our faith may be needed, then they can switch us on. But then, when it is not needed, and this is usually, in fact, when it is most needed, they prefer to have us switched off. Well, do you have a verse to support this? Yes, all of the Bible. Yes, you see in the Old Testament, the prophets were taken out when they spoke what the people needed to hear. And in the New Testament, we killed such a one who was perfect in every way. And he too spoke of the things that we needed to hear. And we killed him because, well, we didn't want to hear it. Tell me we're different today. (laughs) So, well, now how to end a very incomplete message. Working in the world as a Christian is working or bringing the kingdom from heaven to earth. Working in the priesthood is mostly about equipping people how to work in the priesthood and in the kingdom. Your ministry is your job if God hasn't called you into anything else. Your ministry is your students if God hasn't called you to anything else. If you are a kingdom worker and you end up with lots of resources, then use those resources to push the ministry further down the road. I just completed a message titled, Clearing Up the Denominational Conundrum, so I won't go into what that is all about and how it affects the Christian community today. But I will share that as I finished and published that message, it occurred to me that denominational and non-denominational titles are or may be prophetic in some sort of way. I mean, look, Denomination is a term used to describe money, and well, we have somehow ended up differentiating ourselves from the Catholic Church as well as each other using a term that also describes money. Hmm, I just saw this after I did my message on denominations. And well, but as we divorced ourselves and titled ourselves again, calling ourselves non-denominational, is it, well, a strange thing that we stayed under the title used to describe money? Only this time we stated, or declared, that we have no denomination. Perhaps this is why churches struggle with resources. I'm not sure. I'm just some guy who thinks too much. (laughs) Well, anyways, this is a fractured message I know. A little bit about being kingdom successful, and then what it looks like to work in a kingdom that does not necessarily honor God. It is a mess. I am not sure I want to clean up. So I have an update this morning, February 13th. So this very morning, as I'm thinking about getting ready to record while driving to the gas station, I get out and insert my credit card into the card reader, and it is blank. That is the screen. So once again, at this particular gas station, I am compelled to walk in and tell the attendant which pump or reader isn't working today. Yes, this is sarcasm, for it is not the first time at this, by the way, new gas station, that their pumps or readers haven't worked. Now, but the real of this message is played out in the scenario. And this is why I'm including it, as I am sure it will find a place to land in your heart and mind. The attendant acts as this is normal and states, how much do you want? Now, I hate guessing about these things because, well, they can't give me what I want unless I overguess, right? Gas prices change like people's minds do when they are deciding on making a good or bad decision. But then maybe I'm the only one who struggles with that. Anyway, I guessed hoping that I get my full tank. I pump away, and because gas went up a little bit, I did not get my full tank. This means that I will have to stop earlier than I wanted to, because I'm short on gas. No big deal, you say? (laughs) Let's check it. This gas station left money on the table. How much is irrelevant? Because it was not a mistake. It's a repeated behavior. Why say this? Because it always is an issue at that station. So if I guess low, and I leave with only three quarters of a tank of gas, they did not sell all that they could have. Repeat this for every customer who shows up today to get gas at that pump, and then times that by a week or a month or a year, depending on how long it takes for them to fix it. That's one pump out of eight, and every day it is eating into their profits, especially for those of us who don't like to overshoot the estimate. This is that, and it's happening every day on this planet, and right under the very noses of those who simply think that shrink is a normal thing and should be accepted. It's not how much you make, but how much you lose. We could look in the credit card and loan debt and see that many people could have lived their dream life if they stayed away from borrowing money. I don't even know. At 61 years of age and being a chronic borrower for over 40 years, how much an interest I have paid to those institutions that loan money. 
I'm not picking on them, but more of my resources have gone to pay the interest on what I buy than towards the purchase of what I have bought. That's money on the table. Give me a raise, I cannot make ends meet. Ha, give yourself a significant raise and cut the card. Yep, cut the card. Just one at a time. And watch how much of a raise you give yourself. Oh, and you want more of a raise? Then consolidate your debt with personal loans. And then the personal loans with bank loans. You can raise yourself right up out of debt, never having received a raise from your employer. Now, if you doubt me, don't, because I have done this several times in my life, completely avoiding bankruptcy. And even now I'm doing this so that I can retire this August 10th, 2024. Yep, I'm retiring after 28.8 years in government and will double down on this podcast and on writing books. I will go out helping all who want to learn from a fool that was rescued from himself by God. Listen, debt is no joke, and but I can tell you that God can give you creative ideas for getting out of that mess if you are smarter than me, which is highly probable, and you can stay out of that debt and build some wealth. What? Why? So that you can sow into people's lives and situations. Yes, money is a life preserver for those sinking under the quicksand of debt. You can be that person, and in these days and in the days to come, financial issues will increase. This is kingdom thinking. Not necessarily church thinking, as they too seem to be struggling for resources all of the time. (laughs) Perhaps they should name themselves after a larger denomination. (laughs) Yes, be specific, church. Which denomination are you exactly? Hey, I love the authentic church of God. The fake stuff is, well, just fake. Well, that's it for today. Remember, it's not what you find wrong or disagree with regarding these messages, but what you can take away from them. Together we can do more to impact the kingdom than if we work alone. Let's flip the script and kill, still, and destroy the works of the enemy and create space for the light of life to shine through into people's lives. Find us eating, click on the like and subscribe button. Let's build this ministry together. Thanks to see you next time in deep water.